Shirts and skins, let's get it. Yo. Shirts and skins, and we back again. The best coverage in college sports, we come to win. With Brandon, Mark, and Matt, no one go hard as that. Share it with your folks, and they'll learn where it all be at. It's just three of the guys, childhood friends that be setting the vibe with a few hot takes, jokes, and predictions. Love the Boise State, we now welcome you to listen. Shirts and skins, let's go. Happy late Thanksgiving, everybody. This is the Shirts and Skins podcast. Matt Lamb here. Mark Moss is here. Brandon Minert's here. We're back from a Thanksgiving break. Slumber. Um, I traveled. You did travel. Did you guys stick around? Oh, yeah. Stuck around. And by travel, I mean driving four hours to the eastern side of the state. Ooh. Snow over there? Uh, n- or just cold? No, just cold. Cold. A little windy. windy. little windy. Always I, windy. I uh, did a little goose hunting. What? You really? did? Well, you? I went. Oh. Um, my brother-in-law got one. Is that a dog? And, uh, Is that what you ate? Get it? Uh, yeah, he's got a dog. Got a dog. Yeah, okay. the other brother-in-law had the dog. So but, did uh, you eat the goose? We didn't eat the goose. Somebody was going to take it. Not not a goose eater. A goose. Well, it could have been Thanksgiving <laughs> meal, right? Mm, it, this was post Thanksgiving. Right. <laughs> I heard goose is decent. It's yeah, greasy. I've like had goose. Christmas something, goose. Something, that's not the best. Greasy. Yeah, it's like duck. You ever had duck? I have had duck, it's but duck. I've only had store purchased duck. Oh, okay. I've have never you ever had, had like Branzino. I've had Branzino. You want to know? You want to have a good duck? Steamers in McCall. Okay. You ever been to that yeah, yeah, re- restaurant yeah. on the on, kind they of on the lake there? Yeah. Steamers, uh, duck. I, I ordered duck. their duck there once, okay? And it had like a cranberry kind of jam yeah. thing. It was fantastic. Do they do I, duck nuggets? I, like there was nuggets? no duck. They were small. You could call them a nugget, but they didn't advertise it as such, okay? <laughs> they were they were small? Like They, they were, were like, like little small. medallions? They were almost like medallion. Yep. Not it was bre- good. Not and so I've ordered though. duck twice since then and like couldn't even finish it type of thing twice. Mm. But their duck was very good. Steamers in McCall. There you go. Not a paid sponsor. No. <laughs> no should be. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that. Yeah. It definitely should be. No, yeah. It's a normal Thanksgiving week for me. Yeah, us too. Guys, we got some stuff to talk about. Yep. We got the game uh, against. Who, huh? who did we play? What? Check it out. <laughs> who was it? Are you, the Beavs. Did Oregon you pull up Brandon? Why am I driving? <laughs> Dude, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Driving four hours. I got back today, so whatever it is. Ah. The, the ticker's a little delayed. All right. So, okay. Oregon State Beavers. Uh, took care of business, obviously. Uh, we're going to talk about that game. We're going to talk about the Mountain West Championship game yeah. on Friday yeah. at 6 p.m. Yeah. Yes, sir. Against UNLV. We know that, right? Yep. Right. That's been confirmed. Confirmed. And then we're going to talk some Heisman stuff. We're going to talk about high, I was going to say highlights, but different things that happen yeah. in the college football world, yes, NFL, absolutely. just weird stuff, funny yeah. stuff. So stick around for that. It's kind of new, so kind of cool. What else? What else you guys got? Yeah. I got a shout out to an, un, un, I, I think, later. Remind me. Later, I got a shout out to an unexpected place. We'll, we'll say that for later. Place? Yes. Whoa. Oh, no. Hey, whoa. Dude. See my what shirt? is this? Iconic. Yeah, yeah, we can see it. Whoa, I like it. Everyone has a plan yeah. to get punched, they get punched in, the in the mouth. We've yeah. heard this. Um, Sweet. Saw that online. All right. Like Black Friday ad? Or? Uh, no, I saw it somewhere that, you know, on Instagram when they just advertised yeah. You to death. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to buy that. I like it. So it was like the debut. Oh. Tyson. I don't know why I suppose. I mean, he's had a weird life. Oh, weird I life. still think he's the best really boxer of all time, right? Oh, and yeah. not the greatest match against <laughs> Jake Paul, but well, I mean, oh, it was all scripted. Oh, right? yeah. No but way. still, I thought that was good. Mike Tyson, the, incredible, incredible fighter. So walking out to and from the stadium on Broadway there, there was a dude. With a big old box of t-shirts. Are, you were, oh, you yeah, were walking out. Did you see him? Bootlegged Genty. Ashton effing Genty. <laughs> oh, is that what that was? I <laughs> yeah. saw those he's shirts. selling them. Guys were buying them left and right. After it. the game, I saw three guys buy them right from 25 bucks for like a $4 So, shirt. you know, <laughs> NIL all year, like the NIL <laughs> that was, shop. That was Have definitely not NIL, NIL store, right? but yes. The NIL store. Yeah. Ashton Genty, number Again? one seller. Of all schools. Of all players. Of all yeah. players. Now you have to remember this year just the schools that are contracted with the okay. NIL store. Still? But yeah, it's two months in a Do row. Do you think there's some power four schools that are on there like Texas yes, or I'm Ohio sure State, Oregon? No or I don't know about it. Who? Alabama. That's awesome. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Good that for him. Awesome. Did the police do anything with this they, bootleg? I, 
Shirt he was guy? yelling the Ashton F. So wait, Genty is it bootleg? Like giving him cash, and it was a. Is it bootleg? Is it bootleg? Can you do it that? Was, yeah, I don't. I don't like, think it depends on what was on the shirt. If it was licensed, you yeah. know, stuff like that. I don't know if it had a boy. I didn't see a Boise State logo. It had Ashton Genty's name. Okay. With the yeah. Maybe Ashton Genty would like to have a word with him. Yeah, but I'm sure that's there was a, not dude. Money could you imagine that. somebody walking around selling <laughs> Mark effing Ma? <laughs> like, sweet. I'd be like, that's actually he's got a snowplow and he's got an Ashton. F and Genty t shirt. Yeah. Um, he loves them. So, talking about Ashton Genty, we went to the game. I wasn't there. You weren't at the game. I was the only I one to watch the, the broadcast, right? You, you guys didn't yeah. watch it? Right. No, I was no, no, no. at there live. Yeah. So, uh, morning game. Did that matter to you? Uh, How was the line getting in? So, here's the key. And I, I hate to say this publicly because of all the How listeners. How else would you have to say it? I'm just saying, giving up my tips. You don't ever go into the stadium on the east side. The lines there are massively Dude, huge. the line on the west side was massive. Really? Yeah. When wow. I walked in. Oh, okay. Well. But you didn't take the regular line, did you? I walked right under the van area. <laughs> walked right through. It was incredible. <laughs> yeah, you went in. What are you talking about? Yeah. The press box. No, I'm just saying, like, the line on yeah. the west side was, oh, like, okay. wrapped all the way around. Really? Like, in the parking well, lot. It was I went bad. press. I used my press pass as well. To get went it. Went in there by the you time. You left I, your family. Well, there was my dad. It. My okay. dad, my wife, the two kids. Okay. They used four tickets. And they I waited used, yeah. in line. <laughs> so here's the thing. They were they they were at the seats before I got there because I grabbed a few of their, their chairs and stuff. Oh. I was going to meet them up there. They beat me to it, and I had no line. So I don't know how they got in so quickly, but okay. there is ways to maneuver. The lines were slow getting in because they had a bunch of people calling sick the day after oh, Thanksgiving. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, yeah. Dickie put out a tweet saying, yeah, hey, we're short-staffed. We got volunteers Come early. Here. Yeah, it, I, it, there was some late arrivers, but I thought by halfway through the first quarter, it was packed, man. Yeah. It was packed again. Yeah, it was, it was great. There's been years where the Thanksgiving game, I always cringe like, oh, we got to host that one because the student section will be less than half full. You know, full. there'll be a lot of people. It was full, completely full. packed. I, I mean, that just speaks to where the, the team is. Winning solves all those problems and genty, all of it. But it was, I actually, I prefer the night game. I'm, we'll talk about this week's game. Super stoked for this coming week. I like the light show. I like just everything that goes into yeah. a night game. That said, the 10 a.m., the light, the uh, sun was Shining on us the entire time. Didn't get cold, layered up. I thought it was perfect. It was a good environment. I got home at 1 30, 2 o'clock. I forgot probably the exact. Two, probably two. And I just sat there, kind of in the middle of the like, kitchen. Like, <laughs> like, what do I do now? Do I go to bed? Like, is it <laughs> is it time to go? Do, do I have to wake up in the morning early? Like, what what do I do? So that was a little rare. I li- I love the morning games. Like, I'm really happy with them. You, did, you wouldn't want to do it five times a year, but once, oh. twice a year, great. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And I think awesome. what made it great too is there was just so many other good college football games either that day or Saturday. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. So because usually when I have the game, you know, we watch it early. It's like, man, it was so awesome building up for the hype. If we have a Friday night game, I don't know that it's like Saturday's a little bit of a letdown. I don't have sure. that much to do, but there were some really good games on and yep. it was a lot of fun. Well, what do you think of the game? Um, I I that this was the best we have played in a month. You know, I thought the score was – the final score was as close as that possibly could have been with the way that game played out, if that yeah. makes sense. Okay. It should have been a bigger – I mean, I thought we played well. I feel much better going into this coming week's game after that game than I had the previous three or four. So Even I thought San we played, Jose? Yeah, I didn't like the way that San Jose State game went at all. I mean, I know we ended big, but there was like the pick six and there was a couple funky things, but like – we could have lost that game, that San Diego State game. San Jose it, State. San Jose State game, sorry. I never even, even when it was 14-7 for a second there, it was like there was no doubt. And I think part of that was half of Oregon State's team did not want to go through bowl prep <laughs> and any more practices. They were done. Oh, they were felt like they're to me, not bowl eligible now? They're not. They didn't, now, okay. Yeah, they had to win that game. <laughs> I didn't even but, think about um, that. <laughs> I thought we looked really good. I thought that uh, um, I actually... I thought the defense, there's always going to be, like, the defensive backs just are what they are at this point until that changes. And we all know there's no way. There's no way. Warren, Warren is Warren. <laughs> there's no way Marcel Yates is coming back. <laughs> he is available, we just saw. Marcel Yates is not walking there's through that no door. There's no way Warren is. I'm, we shouldn't even talk about it now because we're in the middle of a title run. Warren is not coming back next year. End of story. That We know that. I'm just, I'll put it out there right now. Hot take. He's not coming back next year, okay, as the cornerback's coach. But um, so we just know what the DBs are. They gave up a couple things. But I that said, I thought they played really well. Yeah. I thought the DBs played as good as they played. 
still turn back, please. But um, they were in position more often than not. Dude, who um, was it? McCoy. I thought they had played pretty well. Pick six yeah, chance dropped, at mm. the start. Yeah, yeah, dropped it right at the start. That was encouraging, though. Yeah, that was encouraging. Yeah, yeah. Uh, should have been 42, seven, 42, 10. At it least should have two. been. If it's not for a couple penalties, can we talk yeah. about the penalties? Yes. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Gen- Genty, I think has Brutal. three touchdowns. Brutal. Yes. And I think he goes for over 300 yards. Who, yeah. who was <laughs> seriously? Who? <laughs> so that's a bummer. The one on Prince was ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. That was, that whole, I didn't see the his other hand. One. Yeah. It's in the wrong spot, but he didn't like, he hold didn't on. jerk him. He didn't do anything. It was just that one to be was right re- there. And it was a highlight. It was a highlight. It run. was. It was a highlight run. And, and and those are the things I know we'll talk about Heisman, but those were the runs that <laughs> he just yeah. you know, he had two highlight runs that got pulled back. I don't remember the other one, what the penalty was, was on that one. And was it legit? I think it was a holding. I think it was a holding at the yeah. line. And I don't know if it was legit or not. Hard but, to say. But yeah. the Prince one was that Brutal. I thought was bad. Yeah. Somebody that, will leave us a comment to correct us, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, there was two major penalties that yeah. brought back big runs and it's like uh, Yeah. Uh, but I mean, we dropped a, a camper, dropped that deep bomb. Oh, dude! Uh, so that was tough. But he but had a hey, good game. Listen, What's that? that gave Genty more yards. It sure, uh, yeah. <laughs> and a camper. touchdown. Yeah, no, yeah camper. Ended did up we end up scoring that we drive? Scored, we did. But it, but yeah. really, I mean, Genty had that fumble in the red zone, and then we and then we turn over on downs. Those are two. You know, I thought. I, I just think that the score could have been a lot bigger. And coming out of the half, I thought they had the, – their offense wasn't as great in the second half. And I, it was like Genty rattled yeah. off an almost 70-yard run. And then yeah. the next three plays were just weird plays yeah. to me. Like the up the middle with Genty, who was tired. Like yeah. He got to sub him out yeah, yeah, at that yeah. point. He got yeah. a yard. Yeah. And then we had some missed opportunities. And then we kicked. And oh, we kicked Bolt another got, field goal. Is that when Bolt got blasted? Uh, That was in the end zone. Didn't he get blasted yeah. in the end zone? Yeah, yeah. I thought we scored the next play. On that one, I don't think so. I think we had a field goal, but well, anyway, on uh, anyway, Bolt got blasted in the end zone, I right? Thought. Yeah, and then we had to settle for a field goal. I thought I thought Capels caught it on the next play Maybe. on that one. You might anyway, be right. you might. Be right. So those so the stalls and the field goals were kind of a bummer. Yep. And then that we just kept leaving them in there, right? Like Oregon State kept having chances yep. to get after it, and yep. so, but I'm with you. I mean, it was good. It was good. Like it wasn't dominating. I think it was. You know, this team is. I don't know. How good this team is. Our team? Yeah. That's so funny to say. We're 11-1. and one. We're through the season, <laughs> yeah. and we don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, how good? I mean, I don't well, know. I, I don't know. I, I think I'm, tribute, I'm not... I think personal tribute, like Prater talked about earlier in the week. Like, the roster itself is in a top 10 roster. No. I mean, uh, Genty's a top two. <laughs> but, like, the roster isn't. But we're a top 10 team. And I think it, it's credit to coaching. And I think that's what you can look at. I think coaching got us to where we're at right now. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. And so I think this is one of the best coaching, all-around coaching jobs of any team in the whole country. I think you can throw in Indiana. I think you can throw in uh, Colorado, potentially. You can probably throw in Miami or something. But uh, as far as coaching is concerned, this is the best coaching job, I think, in the entire country taking a team and bringing them all the way to where they're at and did not having a, a trip or a stumble at Wyoming or yeah. at San Jose state. I think Danielson deserves yeah. a ton of credit. And if you were to compare him against the other people that we knew were in the running, like Choate, hard, hard to argue, hard to argue with what's yeah, happening. Choate, I mean, he you started out what they end up three and 10, nine? No, three and uh, 10. they had 13 games. Okay. Well, they didn't win yeah. the last game, <laughs> you know, like By, they didn't even get, he, he's, no. a, he's also working with first year, I mean, I guess it's Danison's first year too, but he's been with the program for longer. Yeah, and he's got a bunch of different players, you know, not as good of players as Boise State. Sure, agreed. So, so. Sure, agreed. But you know, six wins. I mean, you can get to like for oh. Choate. Like, right, oh, come right, on, right. Right. Six oh, well, wins? I anyway. mean, we've we've talked about Choate. He's yeah, yeah that's eh, enough. Whatever. <laughs> hey, but anyway, can, can I say something though? One of the things I wrote down with it being Thanksgiving on Thursday, <laughs> last okay. Thursday. Okay. Can we? I know there's things that we are all not happy with right. that have happened. Right. And you can nitpick and you can say DBs, whatever. You could say special teams, sure. whatever. But can we just stop and enjoy yes. where we're at and say, look where we were last year yeah, and cool. the year before that and the year before, before that. that. We we knew at the beginning of this season it was CFP or bust. We had right. the pieces lined mm-hmm. up, right? And it was like, that's in our sights. We're selling everything to get there. 
and we're on the doorstep. Oh, yeah. Right? We're one game away. Yep. Which is awesome. And it's like, if you would have told us a year ago that this would be the case, we probably wouldn't have believed it. Right? Mm, Okay, yeah. I mean, would we have hoped it? Sure, you're always hopeful. Mm, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's like, man, we got a first-year head coach. Yes, we have, you know, some great players and things like that, but a lot of unknowns. And so, yes, we have a huge game on Friday. And, yeah, we need to do (laughs) – a lot of, th- you know, there's always things to fix, but mm-hmm. I think it's as fans, you know, we need to take that little yes. time and say, this, oh, is, this is awesome. This 100%. is awesome. Cause I read on Twitter. It's like, Hey, no matter what, we got to look for a new DB coach or we got to look for all this <laughs> stuff. And it's like, yeah, we're not perfect. We're not going to be, Yeah, but love where we're at. Yeah. Well said. Well said, Matt. Thank you. Where's the, where's the applause for oh, that? Come yeah. on, dude. Wake up over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a joke. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I no, agree. No, I really mean, but we've been talking about it a lot. It's yeah. what, what I think is so great is we're winning every single game, but there's those little things you need to work on, which I think is great as it is. And, you know, we were sitting and I was actually just me and Richie Brockle hanging out in the press box. <laughs> yeah, dude, it Richie's, was just us. We should have Richie on. He is a good guy. We need to get Richie on. Yeah. He was awesome. Um, this is incredible. Like, it really is incredible. And everything that Danielson's been preaching all year all year long has resonated with the team mm-hmm. and has come through and he should be so happy at the end of this season dude when was the last time we were in this situation well first of all 2014 never, oh, i know but something similar right <laughs> yeah. going to the last well, fiesta 14 bowl. was even we backed into it we backed yeah, we in did. we yeah. had two, two losses. losses and some other things happened in the american we kind of backed in <laughs> yeah like it's been so today the ap poll came out and we're 10, 10? again yeah. first time since so 2011 really, 13 years ago yeah. dude my daughter was born that year so She's really in wire, high school next wire year, to wire dude. Crazy, you know, like you know, front to like start to finish, we've been leading that charge yes. all, all the way through, which is amazing. Yeah, no, it's awesome. I mean, just to be in the and and you see the haters and the whatever on Twitter and like, oh, the talking about should we have a buy? Should boy? And I don't even really. Care. It's just being in the conversation again. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, been yeah. so long since we were in that legitimate just, conversation. Just having a number next to our name on the screen. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's such a nice three years. We were not three ranked. Years. How no. much football have you watched this week? A lot, too much. Okay, well, <laughs> last, Fox is, last night I was like, I can't watch anymore. <laughs> I haven't watched Fox any is today. Repping the Mountain West Conference Championship. Well, they're doing the the big noon kickoff. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Although I don't, I was trying to get a, a yeah, grasp on. We don't on, know what. I don't know if they're doing anything like like fans, fans or anything, or if it's just going to be them sitting because it looked to me like it starts an hour before kickoff. So if that's the case, oh, they're going like to be pre-recorded? sitting like. No, I think they'll be like sitting in the stadium with the the like guys in the corner warming. Of the end yeah. Zone. You know, oh, okay, that's okay, my okay, guess. Okay. Hmm. And maybe ha- probably halftime. Yeah. I mean, it would be cool if they down, did something. Still but down. You can't yeah. have you can't have it like start an hour before the game and expect people. I, so I kind of think it's just going to be them on well, the field. Well, it's a weird day if you expect fans to come out on a Friday morning. Yeah. Yeah. They're know, not like, doing it in the morning. They're not. Yeah. They're not doing it in the yeah, morning. Kids are in school. I know. Well, yeah. still, like, I'm just used to big. Yeah. You know, big so it's different. But the their crew is coming and they're doing the pregame that's awesome, show, dude. which is awesome. I saw that. Um, Oh, crap. Stuart Mandel and uh, so, so a lot of the – so you guys are trying to get press passes. Mm-hmm. Cr- fingers crossed. Yep. I'm going with the family, yeah. so I will be in the game. Hey, maybe we can but get some be of those cool, guys there'll to be some of those, in. Yeah, man. There will be some national guys guard. there for sure. But it's it's awesome. It's awesome to be in this position. So Watch if you're uh, BSU and you're going through applications for the press box. You're like Stuart Mandel, eh, whatever, Pat, <laughs> Pat 40, 40, Matt Lamb. <laughs> Brand of mine. Shirts and skins. Uh, we may not get him this. We, we may on. not. That Please? might fill up. We're usually at the end of the row, like kind of towards the end. We'll be Dude, very, very at the end of the row. Oregon yeah. State had they one person, Did they have but they were sitting. It was like an Oregon State coat, but it was just the whole row was open. It was like BJ Reigns and KTIK guys and the Idaho Statesmen, the, all the normal Idaho yeah. press. Yeah. And then us, me and Richie. <laughs> and I came for a minute. And Mark came Mark to there. eat. I, I got lunch. <laughs> came to eat and Actually, I got left. breakfast. Dude. Way better than any dinners we've ever had up Pancakes, there. Pancakes, sausage. Pancakes, sausage, eggs, hash browns, the whole spread. Bacon? Was there bacon? There was dude, bacon. Matt. There was everything. The whole spread, dude. Listen to what happened. Oh, Fantastic. Listen, but listen to what happened. Richie and I are hanging out talking. <laughs> Mark comes in full, like, star suit, like, <laughs> star suit with winter star. clothes. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, yeah, he's fully there. packed. Oh, oh, yeah. And he's like, man, hey, guys, like, just eating the meal. And we've already eaten. Would we're, you, like, calm and everything. Would you expect anything different from Mark? Mark's like, how about that fumble? We're like, okay, dude. We're, Hey. We've moved on. That How about was, these eggs? We're like, wow, guys. And we're like, are you 
Okay. Dude, you hurry, eat your food. Eat your and then food he's like, and all right, leave. see you later. Yep. <laughs> That's pretty much what it was. I don't, okay. the concession lines, I don't do. And we didn't get there yeah. quite early enough to get food. So I'm like, sorry, family. My son was, he was hangry by the end of it. You didn't I'm like, take a plate down, nine, no, did you? No, I ate by myself. They had to wait till we got home. <laughs> Mark leaves his family going the line yep. on his own. Exactly. He doesn't get food on yep. his own. Yep. I hey. can see Mark like walking out with a plate. Like, no, no this is all, uh, this is for me. It's not my kids. <laughs> it was just like I it was a funny moment because we're provoked. all like hanging out, just pretty normal. And then you hear this, shh, 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 <laughs> sit down. <laughs> we're like, well, who is that? Like, oh, it's Mark. Anyway, oh, it's the ski patrol. <laughs> oh, the ski patrol guys. Oh, you got oh, you on break? What's up, fellas? <laughs> You're on break. Oh man, what a game! What a game! All right. Okay, see you guys. Love this uh, football stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, good. anyway, so we do have, I think, I really do think this is the most important week in BSU football history, future, very big. Like this week, potentially, because it's not about IMO mm-hmm. winning in mm-hmm. the playoff. Mm-hmm. That's no. like no, it's, playing it's with not. house money. That's yep. agreed. Cake, get there. Agreed. frosting, agreed. everything's great. Agreed. Even if we lose by whatever amount, you don't want to get suck, blasted, but you yeah. don't want to have a bad taste, but yeah. still, we get the money. We get the yeah, exposure. I heard, the, I heard about That's that. That's interesting. We got to talk about that. Yeah. Because BJ at first was like, there's no money. And there is no money he's starting like, in 26. Money. But apparently this year and next year, it's like the old rules where the participants mm. do so get some money. Pot- but it goes to the conference. conference. I think Boise State gets a Does it go to the new part conference? Of it. No, it goes to the year. So we're making money we're from the Mountain West. We're stuck. feeding the yeah. people we're leaving behind. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that could be part of the buyout. We're just like, here, take some of this money. Yeah, um, anyway, so it's like, I wonder if we get money, if we have a buy, do we get some of that money? That's what the- BJ said on, because uh, I asked him, and he kind of responded. He, he said there's certain dollar amount per, so if you get the buy, you get the money as if you were in the first round. You yeah, get the buy. you win. So apparently there's 7 or $8 million coming to the Mountain West. It's a big deal. For either us or UNLV going. And I think Boise State gets a percentage of that. My understanding was that we got 50, the school going got 50% of that. Could you imagine that. getting 4 million BSU? That'd be sweet. It'd be great. But okay. but that's that's not but why you just got to get in. That's you not gotta why you got to get in. The, 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 the payment is big, right? It's but big, but the, it's not. We have to be, in UNLV, they're a scary team right now. Oh, yeah. They're playing about as well as probably anybody in the conference. Mm. Oh, yeah. 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 Better, they're playing better than us right now, but it's at home. It's a, a little cool, cold colder game. than yeah. a oh. cold game, yeah. right? But then we get, if we win this, we get a freaking month off yeah. to yeah. heal. Yeah. We do have Mason. Huge. He played last he night. He did play. Yeah. Or he played a couple days ago. Yep. Right Carry on, on, still kind of working his way yeah, back. Some yeah. penalties. <laughs> still doing some penalties. In fact, I think he was the penalty on that Gen T run on the oh, other way. Right? I think oh, you're right. Um, and Dirk talked about that in the press conference. Yeah. He's like, good to have Roger back, but Roger tried to do too much. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so going he off, had one holding instead of two holdings a week before. So. Working yeah, way better. He, he, well, so to your point, I I think I I think it's undeniable that this, at least in the FBS era, this is the most important game to, to be played at Albertson Stadium. Okay. Oh, for sure. I think that's right. The TCU I mean, game is up there, but that's. But about we lost it. that one. Yeah. Huh. It, but this. So those games, that wasn't the last game of the season. Correct. It wasn't going to be, you know, there's other games. And and obviously, like you say, well, this game's only this important because we won the last 10 in a row. I get it. So every game is important. But the stakes are so incredibly high. And it, the, the thing that makes it even better and more exciting and more stressful is that both teams are in the same position. Dude, yeah. UNLV wins. They're in. they're in. So they're not looking to spoil. They're no, look, they're it's running like to something. both teams. And we've never had a game like that because usually it's us just trying to clinch something it's or like whatever. It's playoff before the playoff. Yeah, this is legitimately the biggest game to ever be played in the state in the of Mount Idaho. West, in the right? Mount West. I mean, in the Mountain West history, winner goes to the playoff. I mean, this is as big as it possibly gets yeah. in Boise, Idaho, other than a play, hosting a playoff game. Yeah. Uh, so... It's huge. Yeah. It's if huge. we win, you know the thing is, if we win, which I hope we do, <laughs> and it, even if we don't get a bye, at least we would we would be maybe the tenth, maybe the ninth ninth ranked team in the country because we beat a, a ranked UNLV yeah. team. Yeah, yeah. We could host that first round playoff. You need to we be could. eight. You That's, need to be eight. Well, okay. Well, I'm saying we beat a ranked team. Depending on who wins and loses, yeah, we could slide into that eight team. Yeah, anyway, we'll we'll see what happens with probably, the ratings because I I don't know how much they're gonna punt if someone's in front of us, and they lose to someone else in front of us. I don't know if they're gonna push them all the way behind us, and that would have to happen with basically two teams. But okay, we'll see. I I highly doubt we like but those. A lot could happen. 
A lot, yeah. and everything, something happens every week. So, so in the conferences, we'll conference championships in the SEC, who do we have? Georgia is playing Texas. Okay. Uh, Big 12, who do we got? Iowa, Iowa State, State. Arizona State. Arizona, Arizona State. State. Okay, Big Ten. <laughs> Trash. Big Ten, we got Oregon. Oregon and Penn State. Penn, Penn State. State. And then okay. Miami. And no, Miami's no, out. They, they lost. Beat. SMU and Clemson? Clemson, yes. Clemson and SMU. SMU. Yeah. And that's the play-in for them? Like, will SMU make it in if they lose? So that's the question. Yeah. We'll see. That I've kind of read some things. I th- My understanding was if a team plays their way into the championship game and they're in the field – that they wouldn't hold it against them if they to lose it because it's like, well, would it have been better for them not to, to play in that championship game? So, but we'll see. I so mean, SMU. The, the, if yeah. let's say SMU loses, then it's like, okay, do you take a two loss SMU or a two loss Alabama? Is the question. It's like, well, hey. Alabama's going in at that point, right? I mean, the amount of back or is, room is Alabama three loss at this point? No, Alabama's three loss. Mm-hmm. So it'd be a three loss SEC versus a two loss SMU. So, I mean, we'll let – I don't really care at that point, but – We just have to um, win on Friday. If we win on Friday, yeah. So, huge. Well, I don't want to go there, but what does it look like if we don't win? I thought about that. Uh, sadness. Bitter, <laughs> sadness. <laughs> utter, utter – I don't it, know Would it be more devastating than the Nevada loss? I don't think so. I don't think so. You don't think so? I, although Why? I do think the stakes Where are, are we, higher. You go to the CFP and no, you don't I make agree, it? No, I agree, but I think that – the thing that made that one so crazy was the one the way it ended. So I guess we'll have to see how this one ends. Yeah. But if we were to lose it, it would be. I mean, the thing about that one was like we were on like a twenty something game win streak. We hadn't lost in like a year or two. Um, we were number three, not number eleven. So although I do think the stakes are actually bigger this time around, I think that the the. Sh- the feeling, the gut punch. I, I don't know if we'll be talking about this loss in 13 years like we we do the yeah, Nevada I think loss. A lot of it depends on how the game goes. I, I think you're, you're probably right. Yeah. But um, that one was just really bad. I really hope we don't have to, to have to measure those losses. But I have thought about that. And uh, this season has checked almost every box. You know what I mean? And if I always say if you get to a championship game, I don't care if it's at – your son's eighth grade championship on a weekend tournament or a high school thing or this, you get to a championship game, anything can happen, right? And I don't think I would say if we lose to UNLV, I'm not going to – it's a bummer. It's a disappointing. It's a big missed opportunity, and it's losing on the blue, which would be make it worse. But – That would hurt. (laughs) And you'd be frustrated by the loss, but I wouldn't say it was a lost season. I mean – where we're at as a program has taken so many steps forward and we're totally heading the right direction. It would be a total bummer, but I wouldn't be like dreading like, Oh, where are we at? You know, of course you're gonna have those thoughts like, Oh, Genty won't be here. Yeah. There'll be all those. But, um, uh, 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 for me, that would be a long, dark, cold winter. You think so? Losing this game? Yes. Really? It's yeah, that, I mean, again, I'm the one that said we should be thankful for yeah. where, where, no, it's what okay. we've done. It's okay. <laughs> it, it, and you'd have to do that. You'd have to go back and look and say, yeah, but look at all the good yeah. stuff we did. Look at the great stuff we did yeah. all season, and we've got some great pieces in place for mm-hmm. the future. So, yeah, you'd have to do a lot of that because it's yeah. not just like you're a 3-10 and 10 team or whatever, but that would be tough. That'd be a gut punch. And on the blue. That's and what would blue. make it. Because that's something we used to do, mm-hmm. right? Lose on the blue <laughs> under <laughs> different coaches. Uh, I mean, it's going to take a Herculean effort. To win? I think so. I mean, it, yeah, beating the team it'll twice. Take, well, three not, times. I'd like three, to say three well, times, three dude, times within a year. Months, yeah. It really is. I mean, granted, there are two different teams, UNLV last year at the end of the season and UNLV this year. I mm-hmm. mean, Dirk talked about it the first time. Yeah, They're better. Well, he's year. like, we. they had some bad plays, and we were a passing team. <laughs> yeah. Did we and, play them twice last year? No, that was just, just the yeah. championship game. So it's tough. It's tough. I mean, we did play them at home both times. At so their home. At their home yep. both times, sorry. Uh, that's that's the one reason I feel decent. And I feel like that's the one we, reason we should be favored. We are six and a half. Which it started out high, as six and a half. Which is high. It'll probably so be So they give home half. field three. <laughs> okay. So in college football, they basically... I think that should be what it is. Maybe four. Yeah. So 
That's what they're saying. Like three, four and a half, somewhere in there is what it'll. Yeah, be. I mean, six and a half is a decent amount. I mean, we could win by two touchdowns. Like if we play to our best, we could. We could win by two or three yeah. touchdowns. But so could they. But so could they. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the hard part about a good team and a good matchup is. I mean, it was a grind last time. It was a real grind. Now, yes, Mad Dog had to step up. Right? Mad Dog stepped up. I remember thinking. So that was the first. Well, so we played at Hawaii, and that the Hawaii game was the first game that Genty. The first of from Hawaii till now, it's been Genty's been amazing. Still, he just ran for two twenty, and last game he had a couple big ones. But that was like his biggest run at UNLV was like sixteen yards. Do you remember that? A they, bunch they, of shoestrings. Yeah, they, but that yeah. was it. He got the turf monster got him once, and there was like several shoestrings. So I don't know if they did better than anyone. He still ran for a buck something. He had that injury there. Um, I was watching UNLV last night. They were playing Nevada, blasting Nevada. Um, I mean, was it that? I didn't see any of the game. Was it just? It a, was bad. It, I mean, they, they fumbled at the f- going into an end Nevada? zone for an, no UNLV. UNLV to you know um, UNLV just looks they look the part right defensively, and I said that before. And they they they're the team that can that can uh, put enough guys in the box to stop Genty and shut down our receivers. I feel like better than most teams that we play with. Which um, to their to our credit, everybody's been doing that. Wyoming, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even even and Wyoming, Oregon State to a point did that. Yeah, um, but they just look they look like a good team. Like they're yeah. athletic. They're like well, they got this a good is gonna receiver. be a good matchup. Their receiver last time didn't play. I don't know, didn't have the best game ever, and, and they right. had running back turnovers. Really good. De Jesus. We kind of got I don't want to say lucky in that first game, but remember there was like a couple of wasn't there a couple like. Like calls. Uh, turnovers. Oh. There, yeah, there was a turnover before. But we got a couple beneficial calls. On that if last I remember. drive. On the last drive, we there did. There was something. We had a PI in the last drive, yeah. and that helped keep it going. But it was an eight-minute drive to win the game. Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> yeah. sweet. But, no, there was something else, too, that earlier in the game that was just – anyways, Well, this is going to be a good game. I'm thankful it's here. I'd like to think that's enough to put us over the top. But, you know, and I listen to our players. I listen to Hassanin talk, and I listen to these guys, and it's like – and you hear them speak, and they're like, there's no way that they're going to not win this game, right? They want it they so much. It. But then I click on whatever, and I listen to that Woodard guy. They're really good linebacker. Oh, yeah. He sounds the same way. Oh, well, yeah. He's on a mission. They, you know, they're on, like, they only have a loss to us close and an overtime loss to Syracuse, right. who just beat Miami yesterday. Right. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. they're a good team. And it's just going to be, it's going to come down to the classic stuff turnovers. Who doesn't take field goals and makes touchdowns? And in my opinion, and we haven't talked about this from last game, what Mad Dog shows up? We know Ooh, what Genty's going to do. One? Which one? <laughs> which yeah. Mad Dog shows it's, up? It's up and down. That, Every other. Yep. And, mm, and last game great. was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, the His percentage off. wasn't great. His percentage no. was only like 54. Well, some of those were drops. I mean, yes. just blatant drops. Oh, I Camper. thought Mad Dog played fine. I thought he played good. Above average. He had 195 average. yards, two TDs. He scrambled great. He played. Well, good. He would have had a fifty if yard. If he plays yeah. that if, well, if they roll him out right on those bootlegs, uh-huh. it seems like he does better. Yes, he he just. I think yeah, he can't just send him back, no play action, and have him try and. That's not his game. You're, Go ahead. How amazing to Matt's point. When was the last time we've had another team where we're legitimately like, bro? They're an incredible team in the Mountain West. That we're like, they're not losing, we're not losing. It's like the two big teams coming in together. Well, I mean, when we lost to like Fresno State in the Mountain West Championship, did we feel that way? But they were good, but they it was like, ah, you know, we're we not should great. Have I didn't we're think not, we were that great. great. I don't yeah. think either yeah. team was really yeah, ranked. True. If, if anything, it was the 25th yeah. team, and we weren't, and we were coming off losses anyway. Yeah. But it's like, UNLV's pretty much held up their end of the bargain. They have. Lose to us. <laughs> yeah. And then hold on. Right, yeah. like even Washington State, they lost to us, but they've kind of kicked it around. Has it haven't they really lost three it. in a row? Right, so it's like it's amazing, and it and it makes me feel like this is how other conferences feel. There's another big player mm-hmm. that's yeah. swinging around that you're like, ooh, gives you a little pause because every yeah. other time we're the Mountain West Championship, we should win. Mm-hmm. Every other time, yeah, you know, we did. We beat Hawaii. We beat UNLV last year, which you know that was that was a sweet game. Forget we beat we've beaten Fresno. It was a hard game for sure, but still, like no other team's been, you know, this real. Yeah, threat. they're legit. I'm not gonna bash. But that's them. Awesome. legit. Yeah, no, yeah, nobody's great. bashing. I'm just saying yeah. that's an amazing feeling to be like, whoa, hey, this is not. 
Well, but, and you know, that, I think they described it last time we played and was, was going to be a slugfest, right? Ooh, yeah. And I think yeah. this is the title bout. This is mm-hmm. the. I think it's going to be another slugfest. And anybody watching that game, you could see it was a slugfest. Yeah. Especially with Genty. That was just, you know, banging away four to six yard yeah, runs. Do you think Gaines comes saw. back? No. You don't think so? I think even if he comes back healthy, they would have got him in some reps this game. Yeah. Yeah. It's so frustrating to me how Breezy just hasn't been the guy. No. Ugh, not it's been close. so frustrating. Yeah. But that was the game. Uh, you talked about Hawaii and Genty kind of not having his best game or, or crazy numbers. But UNLV was another one where you look at it and you're like, man, he's, no. he's not as Superman. Right. Right. And so will that repeat or will we find a way to maybe get him outside or, you know, I, break free? I we are healthier. Like I still – yeah, we, we got to the brace. back. Did he have – did Genty have brace. a brace? He did not. So <laughs> – I know that I know he's beat on the everyone has beat on the I just don't understand. I don't understand why we run through the tackles. I don't get it. Because we had that like quick pitch to the left side. And he and he ran for 30 yards. Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. And then we're he had four runs in the fourth quarter within the seven yard line. They were all the exact same play. Mm-hmm. And none of them went for more than a yard or two. And I'm just like And it seems like I sometimes, just don't get it. Seems like sometimes we will run outside. But it's to the short side of the field. And it's like <laughs> oh, there's no room to work all out the there. Time. All the all time. All the time we run the short I, side I, field. I, I just and then I know they like to use their their receivers for blocking, but man, we are like the opposite of Utah State sets their receivers way wide. Our receivers, they're all like tight end position. Well, they're, <laughs> they're working so their way tight. in. They're working their way in and yeah, out, right? I don't so. know. It's just so, it seems like we're compacting it, but I just don't understand. I don't know. Do you think I know Dirk, Dirk knows. I, know, I I don't even want to, but it just seems so. Dirk knows. Do you but. think, though, that Dirk shows up and he's like, we've been doing the same thing all year. Now, <laughs> flip it. Just go crazy. Well, every go time outside, we do, like, an option where Mad Dog keeps it or the naked boot touchdown, mm-hmm. right, or pitch out, like, it works. And maybe that's why it works because it's only 10% of the time. <laughs> and maybe you just hold it for when you need it. And maybe that's the method of the madness. But it does just seem like. 37 carries, and 34 of them were in the middle. What do you think the keys to winning the game are? I think it's Mad Dog. I really do. I can think I, we know what we're going to get, get some from Genty. I think you need Caples, Camper, and Louder. I mean, throw Linehan in there if you want to throw him in there. But <laughs> yeah, Linehan. Linehan. I think he Tommy could have Gallardo. a good game. <laughs> I think you have a good game. Bates. <laughs> I'd take Bates. Bates dude. He's pretty Jake good. Gallardo. But I think, I think those three <laughs> need to have – I think they need to have – you know, I, I, it would be nice if Mad Dog had a 230, 250 yard passing game. And then I think Gen T 150 with two touchdowns. I think mm-hmm. that would be, I think that would be kind of the key to the stats of what you're looking at. You yeah. Know? I think we can, if we can, our, our offense is built around getting double the amount of first downs that they get, right? <laughs> like getting a couple yards on the first two plays and then third and short, getting another first down, first down, first down. Cause we're certainly not built. To go first down, first down, touchdown. We were, but it was like on genty runs. It's never been on the yeah. big play, pass play, really, all, all year. One, one thing that surprised me, I think those are great points, by the way. I agree with yeah. all those. Yeah, um, on offense. Yes. One thing that we talked about this was like, hey, we have genty, so why don't we take advantage of the play action, go deep, which we did. We dropped it. But we <laughs> ran a play. We ran play action to Dubar. And I was like, I don't know if that's the right <laughs> guy to run play action with. Yeah. No offense to Dubar, but it's like, make him think you're handing it to Genty. Yeah, I think sometimes sometimes Dirk, you know, he talked about it in the, in the press where he said, oh, get Genty back in. We're doing yeah. Wildcat. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wonder if he knows who's in every time, like on that play action. Yeah. He's like, I didn't and there's know. There's got to be so many himself. details. Well, because yeah. he's probably has the next play in mind. Yeah. As he's as that play is running but out. If but Genty taps himself out or whatever, and you're like, oh, I didn't. Yeah. I yeah. do on defense. I do want to get four sacks. So <laughs> sacks have been harder to come by. Yeah. And even Oregon State, they didn't get rid of it like Wyoming did, like San Jose State did, as quickly as those teams. Oregon State held on to it, and we didn't mm-hmm. get as much sacks as I thought we would have gotten. So I noticed. I think we had two. <clears throat> I noticed what I don't X's and O's probably isn't our extremely strong point, <laughs> but what they did, I what I noticed Oklahoma. Oregon State do, and I think this makes a lot of sense. Two sacks is they went max protect Every many time. play. Like okay. they had like six or seven offensive linemen, and like they had eight guys which on the line. Which is good for us. Well, which is I'd good. Take that. So they're max protecting, and then they're just going, and then they're just taking deep shots. Okay, you know, and so that's probably what I would do because Not our corners. 
Yeah, get okay. So I think you probably play that game both Which sides of that. Do do? But I think that's smart in some regards because I think they've seen what our DBs have done one on one. And so they're just basically, hey, we only have two guys, and we're just going to – and they tried it multiple times, and thankfully they didn't connect on too many. I would, I would much rather they do that because that leaves an extra guy in for coverage to say throw on their guy White is, it, is who it is, um, UNLV. Uh-huh. Throw two guys on him, forward right. and back, and then if they keep throwing deep balls, all right, I guess we'll just play the – hopefully we play the ball well, better versus – Quick, 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 right. all the way down the field. Can't get a sack, throwing it out. I mean, our guys are much better prepared to to play max protect two-on-one. We do. Well, yeah, if you go the two-on-one route. Yeah. If well, you go you're going you're to do two-on-one because you're not going to send more guys than they have blocking. You're just going to leave us. Yeah, you're you're, right, you can't. Yeah, but you I can think they back. caught – Oregon State caught us in one-on-one max protect several times. Where we had one, and it worked out okay. It what didn't was kill the, what us. Was their, what were their passing stats? I it wasn't think, that bad. Yeah, one thing bad. I was going to say, I don't know how this compares. I haven't been tracking it. We did have four pass breakups. Okay. Hey, so, yeah, that's got to be. Well, they sorry, kept sorry. throwing that deep out I know. to the far side. No, so we couldn't were. figure it out until the very well, end. Yeah, they had yeah. 226 passing yards. He was okay. 21 for 37. Yeah. I mean, they one threw a lot. Time. They threw a lot, and they didn't run very much. They threw a bunch. They, You know, they ran it. They only had one successful run, Yeah, really. Oh. Which is a bummer because their running stats would have been just atrocious. Yarder, right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. would have been just atrocious. So, yeah, I mean, I'm curious to see where they go. I think Chenander, you got to give him the benefit of the doubt because he's stepped up to play on every single team that he's played against, and he's adjusted and he's done well. And mm-hmm. I think Chenander's been an incredible coach this year. Yeah, I mean, really, it would be nice to. I, I still don't know why on punt return, why don't we sell out? On the block, because if we're looking just to get the ball back, you could catch it or because it's not like he's the guy that's returning it, catching it. He's still catching with people around him. Yeah. So just sell out on the block every time. Maybe get lucky. Yeah, you don't want to give Especially up a, on a, a 15 thir- yarder. Though. Well, throw a third you know and eight I mean? or a third and, or a four or fourth and eight or fourth and ten and you get a run into the kicker. Sure. I, but isn't like, it an automatic, or is it just is it five 15 yards? every if time? You run into run him, into is five. five. Right. But it's not an automatic first down. No, no. Okay. But so, the other one is automatic first yeah, down 15 well, yards. Yeah. yeah, you can't. I don't know. You, can't you can do coach that. to that. You can coach yeah. to that. And yeah. if we're just selling out every time, I mean, UNLV has so many blocks. Yeah, it's not like they're giving up. You know, do you think we see the RPO this week? The run punt. We almost had the run punt Dude, last we time. Like a, we had like a wasn't it like a stutter, like a run. Yeah, yeah. yeah he pulled it down <laughs> and then he kicked it. Dude, I think I he know. has the green light to kind of <laughs> make that decision, baby. <laughs> I, I, I want to see him tuck it. Uh, he the might. RPO, huh? Yeah, yeah, he maybe, might. Maybe. I mean, I think he does. He hasn't think, yet. No, he Triani hasn't yet. had that he was one. Almost did. I mean, on the one that he. Dude, no, best Triani's was, roughing the passer. Did you see that? That was weak. It was bad. He shouldn't have done it. Uh, no, it was way back late. To that. It was, was way that? late. It wasn't a huge hit, but it was way late. It was, it was late. deserved. Yeah. Deserved. Yeah. yeah. And the run gave, pass. <laughs> I mean, he gave a first down. Obviously, yeah. it all. Yeah, you can't do that. Still, those are the kind of things. Go back to the keys of this game. Those are the kind of things like Dullness extending ground, extending drives on dumb things like that, yeah. giving up a third and seventeen on a on a screen pass, like stuff like that. When it's going to be a tight game, you got to clean it up. Almost kicked did, off. Did we think we would yeah. go from a two QB system to like a three kicker system? <laughs> That's a good trade. Yeah, I didn't have it on the bingo card. <laughs> um, I still don't understand why we're pooching it because Oregon State could have ran it but five yards did. and got to the thirty. They never did. They <laughs> just fair it caught it every time. Yeah. If the tight end just time. catch and run. You so get to 30, out. 35. Well, Danielson said, like, we're the goal every time is to kick it out of the end zone. Didn't look like it. It wasn't this time. No, they were definitely purposefully right. pooching it to the guy that was going to fair catch it. They knew he'd fair catch it. Now, why they didn't adjust and put a couple yeah, dudes there the that dude can catch front. it exactly. and run, well, I what have no you idea. Do is swap up, in the air. Yeah, swap. Well, yeah. even swap right before. Just yeah. start running forward yeah. and yeah. go catch I it. Don't know. Even keep the guy up there to block. Seemed like, yeah. Who knows? Didn't make a lot of sense. I'm excited. I'm yeah. really excited for the game. I do think we should talk about Dan. Maybe a few minutes on Danielson. Go ahead. I mean, he deserves. Yeah. How much can you? Because if we went to the playoff, let's say we get two million, give it to Danielson in the in the in the coaching staff. I mean, really, like you have to reward him for as well as oh, he's yeah. done and yeah. the amount of press we've gotten and everything that's happened. Throw a little bit to, to Dickey, who's done it as well, and then give a bunch to Danielson because we got to lock him in, and it's tough. He's He has a low-paying contract right now. Very low. I mean, he's making half of what Peterson did 10 years ago when he left. Right. Yeah. Well, he's making half. a lot less think than about every inflation, other coach. Think about inflation. Yeah. I, I just feel like 
That being said, making one point one a year in Boise it's I great. Mean, is great. It's great. But if you can get them up to one and a half, one point seven, one point nine, I I don't have a problem with starting him where they did because he was a thirty five year old DC. No one was coming after Spencer Jamison last year. So why would you pay him two million a year when you could get him for one point one? He wanted the job. No one was coming for him. Why would you overpay? So they paid him. But after this year, no matter what happens this Friday, that has to be torn up and yeah. in my opinion, yeah. that has to be extended or, you know, given a raise. I, I would like to think that boy I understand that we don't have the highest budget in the conference. Colorado State does. Um I would like to think that the Boise State head football coach is the highest paid football coach in whatever conference we're in. Yeah. Well, um, at least the Mountain West. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, yeah, so I Wait, would like to get him up there. The but there's there's guys making $2 million. Norvell's making $2 million. Is he? Yeah. I thought he was just under. <laughs> or it's it real makes close. no sense to me why he's making $2 million. So I think after this year that needs to be corrected because I don't think Danielson's going anywhere this year. There's just not very many openings. I saw um, I something you... came open today. West Virginia came open today. Um, Utah he's State? not going to West Virginia. Came, well, he's not going open. to Super I know Five. That. Chicago Bears. But, uh, yeah, that came we'll open. get to that. Oh, my gosh. Um, but, no, he needs, you know. Yeah, I don't think he wants to go anywhere. No, but out of respect, yeah. out of what yeah, no, he no, deserves. Gotta, yes. uh, after this year, I'd like to see that go up for sure. Yeah. Well, he's done an am- amazing job. I think you can't give him enough credit. No. I don't think can. you can give him enough credit. He has done a masterful job coaching. Yeah. Every time at the presser, I love I, – I get motivated by it. Yes, I agree. I love it. And you know he's preaching that every day in the summer, every day in the spring, every day, all day all day long, yeah. every day, preaching the same thing. And these guys have bought in. And you have the right leaders with Hassanin mm-hmm. and Genty. Mm-hmm. And uh, to a big degree, Mad Dog as well. Dude, I'm, Genty's not here if Danielson's not the coach. Yeah, I agree with that, yeah. Yep. And, and I think you could knock Danielson and be like, dude. How? You don't, well, I, you don't have to – you know, uh, thank Jesus every time you talk. Oh, okay. <laughs> he, 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 right? He he's, he's, I, know, I, I agree. I'm not saying you should, but I'm saying you could nitpick, right? You could say all these that, things. That's the type of thing, and, and we're but, all... Th- go ahead, sorry. I'm but people have bought in, yeah. right? And yeah. I think w- what's motivating about it are those values that he has, right? Those beliefs that you can tell they are in him. They're in his core, yeah. and yeah. he lives them, and he believes them, and so... I think you know when he says those things on TV that it's genuine. Yeah. That it's like, hey, this is who I am. I've said it since day one. I'm going to keep saying it. So get used to it. Not That's what that, we're doing. I think he's a worker. I mean, writing out 35 letters, I think he's a worker. Yeah. You know, I think he works, and I think that is contagious. I mean, the guy's jacked as it is, so you know he's working out with the kids yeah. or whoever. He's staying in shape. He's recruiting hard. He's staying on message. He hasn't lost focus. 11-1. <laughs> yeah, no, he, I, yeah, I got pretty no amazing. I, I'm all for it. Being, I, I love to see someone. And, and the, the key with all that that you just said, Matt, is that he's genuine. That's who he is. It's mm-hmm. not fake. It's not yeah. contrived. It's genuine. I do wonder, you know, how do those things play out when you're losing games, right? And, and what? But we'll see. That, well, we that know, we know what happened road. with Avalos. I mean, it just yeah. keeps sliding well, down. Yeah, you know, it the, does. The thing with Avalos, if you remember, he, is. He turned on the religious speak halfway through the season, and it was Avalos something. Did? Yeah, and I it was something like, that. "Whoa, these are like references he never made before." Uh-huh. And so it was kind of like, "Hey, things it aren't wasn't going good." Was what to what find else do I? Center. Yeah, what else do I need to <laughs> yeah. sprinkle in to make this work? <laughs> yeah. And I think with yeah. uh, Danielson, yeah, we, you we've can't had question it, that. We've had it since day one. Yeah, yeah. well, yep. Avalos was all over the board on pressers. Yeah, he was all over it. Yeah, because he was one way one week and another and way. And I think that means so much to players is that consistency. Yeah, yeah. that I like, agree. hey, this is the message. This is the plan. Will we tweak it? Sure, but the core is there, and yeah. you know what you're going to get from me all the time. And you see it. Uh, the media people get upset because he keeps saying the same things. This next game is the biggest oh. one because it's the next game. Yeah, yeah I, I even said that I was. I was like, I don't even it, need to listen to. I, right. I, but to your point. We're eleven and one. The team is bought in, so who cares about and, my and all, five all minutes? All coaches of will have those yeah. things that they repeat. Yeah, Coach Pete was always no question. Yeah. He'd always say no question. <laughs> no um, question. <laughs> the no question was every hilarious. time uh, he'd start. They'd ask him a question, then he'd start. I mean, no question. No question. <laughs> no question. No question. <laughs> but with Danielson, it's I love it's it. It's the same thing, and I agree. We've you know gone to the press conferences, and you, 
it, it is motivational what he says and motivating hope, and you're like man this i want to do better can i say him. this i hope daniel since here for 10 years him and jd <laughs> we're gonna have good years we're gonna have bad years i like him i just want to build around him you know i think the community community communication the community, community, <laughs> the community can build around him. I think he's great in front of people. I think he's great in crowds. I think he's great in private. Not that I would know, <laughs> but he, you know, I just think he's great yeah. person to build your program around. And if you're JD and you can lock him in, assistants will come and go. That's fine. But man, lock him in for 10 years, good years and bad years. Stick with it. I'm, I'm more hesitant to have the quick pull like mm-hmm. with, unless it's an Avalos situation, mm-hmm. but you know what you could get out of Danielson, give him some time, build that up. I can, like, can it. I, can I make an analogy? So many of the listeners know I was in mountain home for <laughs> the game before this one. We even had a comment. We had a comment <laughs> and he's like, what do you say about he's mountain like, home? I'm from mountain home. Sorry. You Sorry. Had to go there. <laughs> and I replied, mountain home's nice this time of year. Yeah, <laughs> sure is. Anyway, my daughter <laughs> played basketball and I had my three other kids with me and my wife, I, she may have been working. I'm not sure. She wasn't there. Uh, we go to get some food before the game. To, that's like the gas station or no, we're driving around and you know, mountain <laughs> home doesn't have a huge selection, especially where we were at. There was a Wendy's McDonald's. There was a taco bell. You're my making ki- an analogy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My kids <laughs> driving by and it's like that taco bell. It's, it's purple. It's nice. It looks new. Okay. We go in, it's messy. Okay. It's messy. Okay. Nice on the and, outside, messy on the inside. And I'm like, kids, does Chick fil A ever look like this? I'm like, no, Dad. No, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. We have a Chick fil A with Spencer Danielson. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Oh. There we, we go. Don't have a, we don't have a Taco Bell. We got to it. Yep. He brought where, it all the way around. Yep, there it is. Where it's we like, don't <laughs> have a Taco Bell. <laughs> Where it's like <laughs> things are run well, right? Chick Fil A run so can we, uh, well. Can we so well? Can we oh gosh, uh, uh, transition? Th- thanks into for a hanging about? in there. By yeah, the way. that took a while, guys. Take a Dude, break. Come speaking back. Speaking of assistant coaches. Tim Brando made some uh, news. This weekend, yeah, right? that was wild. Dude. That was. I wonder if that's going to happen. I see. I'm kind of sad. I, think, I, I would I love that Dirk was the to plan. come back. It's just funny. I don't know if he knew that was like not like that has not been shared with the Boise yeah. public. Yeah. And obviously. You know, these announcers, the TV announcers talk to the coaches before the games and they kind of, I don't think that Brando knew that he's breaking news in saying, oh yeah, Cutter's not coming back next year and Nate Potter's going to be the offensive coordinator next year. He He didn't uh, just make that up. Yeah. Well, he posted on Twitter and he's trying to cover, (laughs) he had a picture with him and Dirk, him and Dirk. And he's like, he may come back. Who knows? (laughs) But if this is the last year, he actually announced his last Falcons game, Tim Brando. Yeah. Yeah. And so he said, it's fitting that I may announce his last one, but he may come back. Who knows? I don't know. Dude, I, I worry about that. I mean, there's continuity because he's on the staff now Uh and it's not like it's a new guy you're bringing in from out of town. But, man, that continuity is such a big deal. And so hopefully Nate can stay for a bit. But if he has aspirations to go be a coach or a head coach or whatever that is. I, I like I, – I don't know. I The only thing that scares me a little bit about that, I like the continuity. I like that he's been working under some really good coordinators here, Nate Potter, right? I think he was an OC for Choate for a year maybe at, at uh, Montana State, I was believe. He? I really? think he was. So he's had Miller left and then Potter took over there or something like that, I think. My biggest concern a little bit is how important the quarterback position is in college football and what is his I don't. experience yeah. with coaching quarterbacks. No. Bringing a, co- a quarterback. In fact, I think Well, okay, better. then that's the can answer I, is do you I? bring a quarterback you, to coach? He was, yeah. 100%. Okay. he was a tight ends coach and at Montana The thing State. about it he is... He never was OC? No. All okay. these offensive court like Bush and, and even Harson, they say, oh, he's a quarterback whisperer guy, right? Mm-hmm. We haven't had amazing quarterback success really is i would say we've had as good as anybody else right i think the the offensive coordinator i mean look at drinkowitz he was offensive coordinator he, he didn't play quarterback i mean he was just i don't care just if you a, played i'm just saying what's his experience working with quarterbacks that's yeah, all I'm saying. i don't, I don't know, know. I, I don't you need someone to coach quarterbacks we agree with Obviously, that right and i think it'd be better if you just had a dedicated quarterbacks coach maybe so yeah. that so maybe. that there's no resentment between like sure. what's happening on the quarterback play and the whole offense sure right? like hey you're slowing us down we need you to do this it's like you have your own specialty coach you can go to and say i'm struggling on this i'm not doing great on that or you need to work on this right and so i don't see that as a problem i do okay. worry a little bit that like Chenander had experience, mm-hmm. and you needed that. 
right? Like yeah. Danielson needed to hand it over to some guy that's experienced and Chinander's done, I, I think, a phenomenal job, an incredible job. Hopefully Potter can do a good job. Yeah. Hopefully he can do a good job. Yeah, we'll talk about that in the offseason, right? But I just yeah, thought that was funny that that was announced. Yeah. You, you got to know, though, whoever it is, and we're assuming it's Nate Potter, he's got Dirk on speed dial. Yeah. Maybe Dirk right. will even stay on as a consultant. He could be yeah. like an analyst or <laughs> he's something. Done that yeah, why not? Like come into yeah. the. Yeah, he's done in. that. He's done. Yeah. It feels to me like if Dirk's going to hang it up, like, who knows? You might be right. I'm he could the, still be a consultant. He's done that like on two different stages. Why not just, but why not yeah. come in during the game and hang out in the in the coach's box? Yeah, I don't know. And then give him your. At some cents. point, I would like to think you just like, I'm, I'm finally done. I'm, I'm not going to well, be involved. I'm not going to be in the, you know, but at some point. But maybe not. He, what else is he going to do, Mark? Play well, golf? he obviously can't leave. He's tried to leave multiple times. You well, might be right. He might. That would be me, great. Let me pull up a clip of but, somebody on Twitter that you guys may be familiar with who was just loving life. Uh, Dude, did you see Andrew Luck, by the way? Yeah. yeah talk about that. Andrew Luck. He's going to be the GM of Stanford. Stanford, right? Yeah. Isn't part of that Bronco Pro thing that came out a few weeks ago that I was like, I don't understand this. Remember that? Um, Do you guys recognize this voice? Are we going to have a general manager in that? So. Oh, yeah. an amazing day. You recognize this voice? Absolute finest. Chuck Pagano. Oh, Unbelievable. Yeah. Chuck. yeah. yeah. Watched Ashton Genty. <laughs> he loves Genty. Run all over. <laughs> Oregon State. He's got a Boise hoodie 220 plus yards. A tutty. A tutty. The guy is a rolling ball of butcher knives. <laughs> Heisman Trophy should go absolutely. I just think these guys, like Pagano's at practice all the yeah. time. Why wouldn't Dirk Benny? These guys are good friends, yeah. Pagano yeah. and Dirk. Yeah. Why wouldn't he go to practice yeah. and hang out in the box? Dude, Coach and, Pete's been to some practices. Yeah, dude. I mean, yeah, Coach Pete, he's, he's a little bit younger than, than uh, yep. Dirk and stuff. Pete still seems like he wants a broadcasting crew. But if I'm Dirk, I go in there and be like, hey, Nate, you got to nudge, nudge. Like, yeah. hey, hey. Especially home games. Yeah. Right, and you you don't have him for the at least be yeah. a good solid mentor for Nate, yeah. I think hundred percent. That's what Danielson does. I mean, you know, he talks to Coach Pete every Sunday. Yep. Have right. Nate talk to <laughs> if you're Dirk Pete, every whatever. Do you just have like office hours on Sundays, and you have a three hour window, and you're taking calls from all your previous coaches, being like, "Hang in there, you're doing a good well, job." Well, I think he, I think he's a consultant. I no think question. he gets paid for that. I think Spencer. I think that it's like a. I don't know who pays or how that works, but dude, he's making money. Dude. He dude, he's he consults money. with a lot of coaches. All right, yeah, and uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, do you mind if we go to the Taco Bell portion of our show? Whoa, more and Taco go, Bell. <laughs> well, we I put, <laughs> 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 yes. I put together some clips of some uh, football games, pro and college. I thought were really Whoa, interesting. homework. Yeah, I did some homework. Look at you man. Well, I just like going Wife over. Wife was out of town. Yeah. <laughs> We'll, we'll go over other stuff for right. sure. Well, thanks. Well, you got to come over. Anyway, <laughs> okay. so. Um, Which one do we want? Well, let me pull up. So we could go over these and we could talk about them or we could just play all of them and talk about them at the Where end. Should, let's go one at a time. Um, I'm going to narrate this one. Yeah. You all right want? with that? Yeah. What do you want? Uh, let's do the pro game. Mm. Here we go. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Nice all right. So. To cue it up here, <laughs> you're going to have to scroll over here, Mark. Like, you're going to have to I roll know, over I'm here. I'm trying. Um, this is the okay. – did anybody watch the the Thanksgiving NFL games? A little yeah. bit, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is one of the Thanksgiving NFL games. I thought the ending was absolutely fascinating <laughs> and somewhat atrocious at the same time. So I clipped that. I'm going to play a little bit of background music here, and then let's just talk about it. Here we go. Thank you. All right, so this is actually the, the last drive of the game, right? So the Bears are driving against the Lions. It's been close all game, right? Williams. Williams. Oh, that's my phone. So, yeah. Okay, Williams actually isn't doing that bad. This is where it gets kind of interesting, right? Williams ends up throwing it. And there's a little bit of a flag. Oh, actually, could be the next play. Sorry. Could be the next play. Here we go. The game was back and forth okay. the whole time. Yeah, this is what happens. Coming back. There's a flag there. Yeah, I came back. Check out this ref, by the way. Oh, that's spread? Freaking jacked. Look at that guy. Massive tricep. It's just massive, dude. So they get this big holding penalty on a good play. Caleb Williams comes back, throws it downfield, just hucks the ball. Just hucks the ball. Not even close. But... Oh. Have no fear. We got ripped, jacked. Look at him. Pause it right there, dude. Pause it right there. That guy's freaking ripped right there. I mean, it's just it's just amazing. Here's a big play. 
It's second down. He comes in, immediately sacked. Look at this. 32 yeah. seconds left. Have you seen this? Yeah. Have you seen this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, seen it. 32 it's seconds. Ridiculous. Everybody's celebrating. Okay, 27. Tick, 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 tick. Check this out. If only they had a timeout. If they have a timeout, it's third down. What? He's trying to get everybody going. He can't seem to figure it out. He's, trying to get everybody going. He's doing the hair wash movement. He's doing the hair wash. Look, look at everybody on the sideline. How much time now? Well, there's 10 seconds, 10 now. seconds oh left. A circle in the middle of the there's so, okay, so I didn't have it on the sideline. They're going wild. Four seconds left. Chuck it deep. Zero oh. time. From 33 so seconds. So bad. Did you have the coach in yeah, here at the end? Right 33 now. seconds. I mean, totally atrocious way to handle the clock management. The what coach is, it, is just. What does the coach have to say about this? <laughs> just, dude. It seems like there's something you could have done. Look at how wild that is. It's so bad. It's so bad. They let they ended the game with a timeout. They snapped the ball. It took twenty nine seconds. Yeah, it was from thirty two to whatever. Yeah, to set up is it? Yeah, I like what we did. Like what we did. Um, again, again, once it's under seven, seven you know, you're, you're gonna, gonna you're gonna call. call uh, it was under seven you know, when he hiked. Twelve. Um, and then um, really really have well, came under 12. Uh, Call yeah, timeout at 12. Yeah. Yeah. So, to me, it's, uh, uh, I think uh, the handle it the right way. There you go. That's <laughs> all you need. <laughs> what? How, how much longer did he last after that interview? Oh, less than 24 hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. Less than 24 hours. Fired, right? Absolutely Gone. fired. Yeah. Oh, so bad. <laughs> so, okay. I think we handled it the right way. Not what you, you need to say. Dude, come on. You didn't. You lost the game. Why can these guys not just be like, some so Avalos would do the same thing. Remember that the Memphis, the Memphis game? game multiple times. It was like they can never admit anything went wrong. So Ever. you're going to get fired either way. <laughs> yeah. Just come out and be that like, we so botched bad. that. We botched that bad. We just couldn't <laughs> call a timeout in time. And in fact, there was guys on the sideline. I had a little clip of a zoom in of the sideline. The guys on the sideline were going wild. Trying like to snap call the ball, out. snap oh, okay. the ball. Like the players, everybody's like, snap the ball. And they're running their pre play, like, <laughs> check down to this guy, to that guy, block him, block that. And you're like, just snap the it ball. It wasn't just the coach, the quarterback screwed yeah. it up. I mean, he's a rookie, so, but come on. He's played football his whole life. That was as bad as a quarterback Why not coaching combo. Get to the line, hike it. Right. And the coach can call the timeout. Get to Agreed. the line, hike it. It was both of them. I mean, the, the, the quarterback, the hair washing was cool. But other than that, <laughs> it was so slow. And they stood there for five seconds with everyone was already there. Yeah. And didn't snap oh, the ball. It doesn't make sense. It was so bad. But it doesn't make sense. If you're the coach, <laughs> the one thing I can't understand, you start at 33. <laughs> you start at 33. It gets down to six seconds. At the 17 second mark, bring call timeout. Yeah. yeah, guys, we couldn't put it together in time. At least it's like losing in a in a trivia game with multiple lifelines out yeah. there. Yeah. Like use all of your lifelines before you can't move any further <laughs> in the game. You have to call the timeout. I just I did not get that. And then don't say what he said. Like if you're that guy, <laughs> if you're the coach, <laughs> like well, it's stupid. It's gaslighting. Yeah. It, it really yeah. is kind of gaslighting. He's like, no, I thought we did a good no, job. That, that's how. And you're like, wouldn't change it. Yeah, wouldn't change it. We also heard another politician that wouldn't have changed it. It didn't go too well for her, but <laughs> I guess I didn't understand that. Here's yeah. some other. And so it was rivalry week. Yeah. Oh, did you guys so. see? Did you guys see the Iowa Nebraska game? Just a couple clips. Did you? The clip, the game. The clip. Did you see it? I, I've seen this clip. <laughs> did did this? Are the stats on the end? Yeah. Somebody posted. <laughs> Death taxes in Nebraska losing on the last second one possession game. It's like, oh, that's man, so close. Check out classic. the start of this Iowa game, okay? Rivalry week. Iowa walks up. Nebraska won't shake their hand. <laughs> Why? That's sportsmanship. Why wouldn't they shake their hand? I don't understand it. I never got that one. I've never the, understood that one. And then the end of the game, it's 10-10. Kicking it, Iowa, like a 46-yarder, makes the field goal for the win. Check out these stats. It's freaking hilarious. You may need to pause it here. Okay. 20 first downs. Nebraska had 20 first downs to Iowa's five. Five? Five. Like, the entire game? Iowa had no. <laughs> Iowa had like 46 yards passing. They had no yards running. What? I mean, that must have been the worst game to watch of all oh. time. And then they win it in the end. <laughs> Nebraska oh. can't win it. It's like, hey, don't shake our hands, whatever. They can't win it, dude. 
A one possession game, and wow. then there was some chatter like, "Hey, the coach Matt Rule of Nebraska walked through our warmups. They showed yeah. the picture, yeah. and it was just him, like just in around. old man clothes, walking around. <laughs> they had no idea what's going on. <laughs> Can so you pull stupid. up the USC game? Here we go. Did you see this back to back? There's no. a back to back no. play that was hilarious, and it, and it's back to back quotations, right? So Here we go. check this out. USC driving, driving, gonna tie the game. Notre Dame oh. picks it off on the one yard line. Pick six. Did you see this play? Pick six all the way to this, all the way to the house. This is the fourth quarter, about three forty left. They're gonna yeah. tie the We're game. Tie forty, it. so it goes up forty two twenty eight. Oh. Next drive, check this out. Next drive, USC brings it all the way down. Set of a ninety nine oh. yard pick six. Check oh. this guy out as he's running. He's staring at the sideline. <laughs> Dude, he's staring at the <laughs> nice. sidelines all the way to the house. Hundred yard. Wait, I didn't. They had two ninety nine yard pick six. No. Hundred yard pick six. And then check this out. Look at this rivalry week. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, <laughs> the punch, dude. The punch to the face. <laughs> Why punch somebody's helmet? I dogs? don't know. There Not it is smart. Again. I don't know. USC <laughs> got destroyed. <laughs> Was that Maeva? Was that the UNLV quarterback yeah. that threw those? Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> well, the USC quarterback. Yeah, no, but he, he played for to UNLV oh, last he year. Went to, and then he switched, huh? Yeah. yeah, no, that was bad. It oh. was, I say back to back, pick sixes for 100 yard and 90, oh, but it was the I next possession. That. I didn't see that. I That's mean, it horrible. was brutal. Um, Don't punch someone in the helmet. No, not smart. Dude, it's a lose. It's going to hurt your yeah. head. Dude, yeah. you freaking have your... It and doesn't do a, any damage to you them. You should get kicked out of the game for that, for sure. There was a number Some of face. you should be kicked out of the game oh, moments. Yeah. Dude, if you're going to punch somebody, read the BYU handbook on that. <laughs> go for... Go low? Go, go low. low. Go low. Go where they don't have any defenses. <laughs> Yeah, I don't get it. I didn't get the punch, but it was yeah, hilarious, yeah. dude. He just like <laughs> <laughs> right, right in the grill, right in the front, right in the face mask. Um, did you watch the Ohio State game? Yes, yes. not all, all of it, it but I a lot of it. it. Jinx on you guys. Let's play it. I have some clips of it. Okay, so we're actually going to go over the whole game. What? <laughs> just because I thought it was interesting. There's a three minute segment. Sorry, everybody, if you're listening to this, stay with us. Yeah, it's just. Good. Take a break and then watch the just watch your phone or watch your computer, okay? Here we go. The game was actually not that interesting the entire game. Yeah. Until the very end, right? So this is the first half. Michigan, I sped it up. I went two times. Good idea. It's really not that interesting. There's a pick, Michigan gets, they get a touchdown this next play. But that's basically all the action in the first half. Okay. Ohio State, right before the end of the first half, drives down and scores. We'll see it right here. So they make a few plays, drive it down. Not that interesting. I don't understand. I don't know if the you guys will think. The offense was so bad on both Dude, sides. It was so bad. This guy actually made an impressive kick. So it goes up 10, Michigan 10. This is where Ohio State just drives down. And at this point, going into the second half, everybody thought Ohio State's going to kill them right. because they just drove all the way down, right? Here's where I think it gets kind of interesting. Did you, did you guys see this? No. So Ohio State's driving down. A little bit of screen pass. Gets down into the red zone. That's not the red zone. <laughs> well, they get into the red zone on this drive. <laughs> Got right? it. Dude, they had two field goals that they sh- that they hooked. Yeah. yeah. I mean, bad, right? Well, the first one went right. Second one hooked. hooked. Bad hook. So this Kay. is a sweet throw right here. Here's an interception. Listen to the announcer. Listen. Yeah, not, you know, somewhat. So, Three plays later, Michigan's going right here, throws a pick. Oh. So pick on Ohio State, pick on Michigan. Kicker ends up hooking it yeah, left. From there, they it. didn't score there. From oh, there. Okay, dude, can you turn it up at all right here? Wait, I can turn it up. <laughs> this is hilarious. This pass, great pass, great catch. Michigan at the doorstep. Listen to the announcer. Gus Johnson. I love Gus. Did you have the... Listen. Same play. (laughs) That's a horrible pass. So bad. It's intercepted. That was a huge play. Listen, dude. Listen to how how the Michigan guy intercepts it on the goal line and nothing, right? Oh, right. This is a big play. Third and six. He ends up running really far for it. And then... Yeah. Next play, kick it for the win. Right. Chip shot. We have some video of what happened after the game. 
Here, here's the plant flag, the flag planting. What do you guys think? I just think it's kind of jokerish. I don't I, love. I want to talk about this. There's yeah. a video. Let's get through the video and then talk about. There's it. a fight. There was pepper spray. Pepper spray. Dude, I got it. I got Pat it on 40 video. Got the pepper spray. I got it on video. Can you see the? Well, let's watch the pepper spray part because it's actually pretty funny. It's these old white cops. Get the away. <laughs> get the <laughs> just yelling and swearing at everybody. I think, Look at this, dude. I think they said. Look, here, it, dude. Here's the pepper spray. Check this out. Look at this guy coming in right in the bottom. Look at him. He just starts spraying it into the crowd like at oh, random, oh, at man. random, not even at anybody. Like it's, like, <laughs> like it's bug spray or something. Four <laughs> teams planted a flag, a trident, a flag, a yeah. flag. <laughs> okay, here are my thoughts on it. Tell me. Okay. It should be an agreement before the game. If you lose at home, they plant Who their flag. Who agrees? Who agrees? The, the rival teams. The rival captains? Yeah. Like tweet it at the, each the other? The teams. The schools. It's like, if you lose on your home field, you deserve that, and it's going to happen. <laughs> Here's my thing about planting the flag. If it's an artificial turf how field, do you, how do you do that? it's going to damage you. You're going to look like an idiot because <laughs> you're yeah. planting and it falls over. And yeah. it's like, I don't understand that aspect. Unless it's like super sharp. If like it's a sharp, trident? you can get like through it. Yeah. Well, and then, then you then got a problem. <laughs> yeah. I get if it's a natural grass because then you're making a statement. Because then it's, you're making a wait, statement. Wait, 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 right. wait, wait. Time out, time out, time out. We lost audio. When? Right now. Now we're back. Okay. Can oh. you hear it? Yeah. Yeah, it, it went out. Audio went out for a bit. Maybe it's your headphones. Okay. Well, yeah. okay. Maybe we're it's back. just my headphones. Anyway, okay. we're back. So I, you're making a statement. I don't know if either way you're making it. I, I think it's clownish. I don't like it. I don't really like so it. So how did you feel about Doug Martin taking the hammer to the, the, uni- I, the Idaho the hammer. logo? Yeah. So there's, it. so there's times where teams pregame, <laughs> yeah. they like rough up the logo with their right. cleats yeah. or they step on it or stomp on it or they hammer it. Yeah. Okay. After you win the game of an opposing team and yep. you bring your entire team out there and you try to plant a flag. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't like move, it either. Dude. I don't like it either. I, I don't like it. I just think that there should be. So we were watching that game, the end of that game. Live? And what was that? Live. Live. And then they're they're interviewing someone, and then all of a sudden it starts showing the yeah, fight. Mason. And the, <laughs> the thing was, and my wife was was watching there. I'm like, hey, fight. So the kids are watching my wife. And my wife's like, where's the coaches? Where's the adult? Like, Dude. where are the people to get them off the field? You yeah. saw the video of Ryan Day. I saw right? Ryan Day. He's just sitting there like dazed working. and confused, right? What's so with that? Dude? There should What's be. With that? You just I, lost. I, I don't know. I agree with you. I think it's clownish. I mean, I think that the the whole idea of planting, it's like, you know, if you think about planting a flag, it's where did that come from? It's a military thing. You just took over. I get why someone would do it. I don't like it. That said, I have no issue as the home team if someone were to come and plant the flag in responding. No, absolutely not. So they take and a picture? defending New Mexico. Right? I know. We'll New get Mexico to that. State. But defending your field. Because... You know, yeah, it's totally. symbolic both ways. Totally. I I don't like it. I think that there should be, I don't know about fines, whatever. I just think it's not super classy. You won. You got a big win. You're the road team. It's a big rivalry game. Celebrate. It's, it's a, and then it happened four times in a day. After you saw, after all these players saw what happened in the first one, now they, they're just asking for a fight. Yeah, they yeah. wanted it. They're yeah. inviting it at that point. And the coaches, after having seen what happened in the morning, it has to be this conversation. Guys, if we oh, win, the, let's act like we've been there. Let's not do these types of things. I saw Sarkeesian tried to stop his players from doing something to Texas A&M's. That was the only coach that I saw try and put a stop to anything. Um, I don't love it, but I totally get defending your turf course, if someone's yeah, going to do that. Well, it's, it's, it is interesting. The whole pepper spray thing was stupid. <laughs> if, you know, if you're around football, you know players fight. Yeah. In practice, in games, they fight. Look, let it, it'll run out of steam. There's so many cameras that I don't think these players are interested in going too far. Yeah. Because they look like total idiots after and they just get thrown yeah. on social media. So they're going to run out of steam. They're going to move away. Just keep trying to separate and keep. Yeah. But pepper spraying, guys. Dude, if someone's <laughs> life was police. in danger, if someone was beating someone well, with what? a helmet or something like, and okay. there's like, like then yeah. yes, the pepper spray but comes out. But it's not like Michigan has no. shivs and they're just going to start no, stabbing. I thought that was a little aggressive. You know. Well, if they, if they saw a shiv, I get the pepper spray. <laughs> but well, I guess I just didn't understand that, like, the yeah. pepper. Maybe it's because they were old policemen. Like They were scared for themselves. You shouldn't be I in the middle know. of that melee. Get the coaches in there. Get the training. The, like, ath- 
who's the the strength training guys always in there ready to just like beat yeah. people's asses <laughs> like you know getting them off the field it doesn't make sense I, I i just think there's got to be preparation for it yeah right? not just let it happen and kind of like we'll figure it out because their response to it was not good yeah i agree with mark like taking your flag out there you're just asking for a fight yeah and Obviously, Baker Mayfield got away with it yeah. and made it happen. But well, Baker was just such a But character. that was, yeah. I think that was like he did the TV interview. The other team was off the field. Yeah. And then uh, he's waving it yeah. and planting it. This is, you're at, I just think that there just needs to be, and, and maybe after yesterday, maybe it happens more, maybe it happens less. You'd like to think that teams, like, how would you go, okay, let's say this weekend, UNLV comes to town. They beat us. How would we feel as Boise State fans as we see their team waving the flag yeah. and planting it in the middle of the blue? It would piss you oh, the yeah. F off. And, oh, yeah. and, and right? to, to the defense of every other fan, we don't have a rivalry anywhere near Ohio State, Michigan. No. Correct. I I, did, I was not born with an, uh, a, a taut hatred of another no. team at no. all. Like they probably were in Michigan, no. Ohio State. You have I, man. Okay, yeah, U of I, but they yeah. became irrelevant, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if U of I was coming in for the Mountain West Championship to get in the playoff, and it was just back and forth and back and forth, I could get it. And it would piss me off if they planted their flag, whatever. Yeah, I, if, if I'm the coach and I say, if I see any of that, you're running until I can't yeah. breathe. Yeah. Me, the coach yeah. standing there. I'm going to run you for days. I'm going to take away your yeah. NIL. I'm going to do everything I can to punish you because you make me look like an ass. Like you yeah. make us all look so stupid yeah it, that's that's what i do can we talk about ryan day yeah, yeah. so I, yeah leading into that like i love the rivalry aspect of college football way more than the nfl like way more in the pageantry like i love college football and in some regards like all this these shenanigans make college football what it is but those were over the top but some of these rival to ryan day leading into ryan day some of these rivalries have become too much like toxic like did you hear his interview before the game? Did Who's, you guys hear this? Who's? Ryan, Day. Ryan Day. There was he like said it was this war. He yeah, I mean, he talked the he said before the game, like a couple days before he was doing an interview, and he compared losing to Michigan. He said it, the worst days of his life comp, his dad passing away and losing to Michigan. And he was dead serious. Well, he's had a lot of fatalities in his yeah. family then cuz he's done it. He's so, one of four? No, that's four in a row. Yeah. And it was like talking about it and like how horrible it is for his family after losing Michigan. I'm sure like it a is. whole year. Sure and it it's is. like it's almost too much. I mean it's almost too like he might lose he's yeah, he, he might fired. lose his job. If they well, don't win the national championship, he might get compare fired. Compare his record. <laughs> Sixty six and ten against teams not named Michigan. I think that includes Michigan. The four losses to I Michigan. I thought it was one and four against Michigan, and then one and four. You know, okay. Harbaugh was 0 and five against Ohio yeah. State before he started rattling off a bunch of yeah. wins. So I mean, it's not unprecedented to have a stretch of team of time where you. Don't. Ohio State should have won that game. Oh yeah, Ohio There's, State has the better players. They should have won that game. More to play for, and they yeah they didn't. I mean, all that being said, he'll probably make it into the playoffs, and he could go yeah. on a stretch. And Michigan's not in the playoffs, so you can make it in yeah. and 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 go through it. But yeah. he could certainly save his position, his job. Yeah, did you see the fans? There were some fans chanting "Fire Ryan Day." I didn't were see there? that, but and, I believe it. I mean. People say fire the coach for much less than you know that, but you know, as a fan, you can't you, be happy with that. His comment. reaction though was very weird. We we kind of mentioned it yeah. just during the he's melee. Like, how are you not in he's there? In a daze, just he like, was totally in a day, and like that's not, like that's an unhealthy response to the situation. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like concerned about his mental health. It's like he's not in control and not. No, aware. it's just like I think he knows. Like, did I like just the despair he's going to yeah. feel for the next 365 days until they play Michigan again? Like, there's nothing that covers it up. It's that bad. Like, it's, it's that bad, brutal, it dude. Is, it's brutal. I mean, he's making 13 we, million we a year. Understand. I don't feel bad for him. Yeah. But holy crap, dude! You said we don't have a rivalry. We don't. Close to that. that. We don't understand. We don't how big that is. We don't. No, I get as a fan. If you if you are 50 <laughs> years old and you're a Michigan fan or an Ohio State fan, for example, and you're all week talking about it, all year talking about it, all, all year. week talking yeah. about it, waking up early because it's an early game, going in, waiting in the cold, standing all game. And then watching that game slip through your hands at a 10 10 game dude, where you don't score any points in the second half. Chip, where Kelly. Dude, the fight after the game was more exciting than a lot of the game. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Certainly it the was. second half. It was. So, Certainly the second half. So Fox kind of redeemed themselves. I guess I don't. I just, you know, I don't know. I did think that 
interception call for the announcer was, <laughs> was so funny. Awesome. I love a good call, dude. I love a good like G- call. Gus usually has one. Gus, what's good. funny was guy. it was one sided. I mean, it was yeah. Ohio State and was Michigan an Ohio State picked State up. He's like, oh, he picked it up, oh. and then Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> just like having heart palpitations and going crazy. Dude, remember when Jetty went for the, there yeah, was an announcer here so earlier good. in the year. Oh, that was those were so, so good. <laughs> that was so good. Oh, man. Well, anyway, that was the like outside of Boise hey, State. Speaking stuff. of, I had this shout out. I didn't want to forget. Here okay. And this is in all seriousness. Yeah. Okay. Uh, shout out. And I, I tried to find his name. It might've been Rob Spear. Shout out. Rob Spear. The was U of the I? A- yes. The AD of U- Yes. Shout out to him. Why? I'm going to be honest. So last week, Wait, I'm you're sitting, not normally? Mark's going to be honest. I'm usually lying half the time. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. So just listen. Just hear me We're out We're trying. Here. We're trying. Do you remember four or five years ago when University of Idaho decided to go back to the FCS? Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? And there was okay. a lot of, like, debate about that amongst, like, they were super embarrassed. Egg on their face. Boise State's here. We're going back to the only school to ever go back to the FCS, whatever, right? There, That was very controversial. There was a lot of U of I grads, everyone that did not want that to happen. And that guy made the decision, the hard decision to do that, okay? Granted, they were in a tough spot. They were have to be independent or they were playing <laughs> Sun Belt or whatever. He can't, maybe he was yeah. forced into it. But I'll be honest. Last week I was in, I was out of town. I was in Phoenix uh, watching soccer, my daughter's soccer. And there's a couple of uh, dads, uh, on that team, you know, girls on, on my daughter's team that are U of I grads. They're big U of I guys. They're wearing their U of I stuff on they're good guys, whatever. And they're sitting there on their phone right before a game. I'm like, what are you guys looking at? They're looking at the reveal show, the selection show for the FCS playoffs. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Idaho's in the FCS playoffs. Right. And I was just like, and after they were done looking at, oh, we're going to play so-and-so, whatever. And I was like, be honest, when the, the change back to FCS, what do you guys think about it? And both of them, one of these guys is actually pretty prominent in the state um, position and some different things, but he was like, they were like, best decision ever. Yeah. And he was like, the games are meaningful. The rivalries are meaningful. We're winning games. You should have seen the Kibbe Dome 10 years ago. Now it's like close to sellout every game, blah, blah, blah. And I just like, shout out to, to the, just, you know, because they're not a threat anymore. You know, but just like their fans, it's relevant for them again. And it was irrelevant for 15 years. You know what I mean? And so I just, I, I don't know. I just like, I was like, I hope we never get to a point where we have to make that decision. You know what I mean? Where the top, the top, not that we go with the FCS, but we have to make a decision where it's like, we just can't financially afford to stay on the level with the top guys. But credit to them that they made the decision they did because their fans are energized again. And it's like fun to watch games for them. Are we really so, going to end the show we with you giving no. a shout out to the U of I? No, we got plenty AD. to talk about. But I want, I, do I want, just, I was just, I just thought it was like, you know what, that, you know, good for them because I think it was the right call. And that was a really difficult decision to make. If you remember, he got dragged through it for, for doing that. Yeah. But it was the right call for sure. Well, shout out to them. I, it is better. And I've talked about it. I, I want to be in meaningful games. Whatever happens in the future, I want to be in meaningful games. Well, the playoffs setup is way better than a dumb bowl. Like it's way better now. Them. Just like way, I love the playoff setup. I just hope they don't screw it up. Can I in a year or two? You know what well, I mean. Well, they're gonna punish us <laughs> if we get a bye. <laughs> they're gonna not make gonna sure get we don't buy. get it again. We'll, we'll never get a bye. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's not even a joke to me anymore. Like they're gonna punish us yeah. and be like, yeah. yeah, they're going back looking through some stuff. Like, how did we let this happen? Yeah, if we get a bye. Well, and they're, they're, whoever let it happen is gonna get fired, and the next guy, his only goal is gonna be like. Don't ever let that happen. Yeah. yeah. You know? True. Um, question to you. <laughs> yeah. Who's going to win? Who could potentially win the SEC? It's Texas and Georgia. Okay. Take the first team, Texas. Okay. What conference were they in last year? Big 12. Gotcha. Who could potentially win the ACC? SMU. Okay. What conference were they in last year? American. Okay. Who could potentially win the Big 10? Oregon. Who? What Pac-12. conference? Okay. So <laughs> the parody that's happening yeah. in some of these conferences to me is absolutely wild is absolutely wild. And there's a huge conversation that happens every in year yeah. on Twitter. This team's not as good as that team, even though their record's this, but their strength of schedule's that, and the teams they've played is this, and the gauntlet they go through is this. I don't think it's sustainable because legitimately speaking, Boise State does not have the type of program to go up against an SEC schedule, a Big every Ten week. schedule every yeah. week. We yeah. don't. And it's very, very, very difficult to compare. Yeah, it is. But we're getting the benefit of of the schedule and the conference that we're in, right? Based on the pro on the setup that they gave us, right? Sure. I just don't think the way it's going. Like Nick Saban did a 
an interview with um, McAfee, and there's a lot of aspects of it that are accurate or that are absolutely accurate. He's like, there is a parody or there's a discrepancy of talent that you have in college football that you'll never really able, you'll never really be able to work it out until there's a separation. Yeah, but what's that mean though? I mean, it's almost like it's the NFL. You never have this argument in the NFL. Oh, the Cowboys aren't as good as this team because of that. Right. That's kind of where it's at. It's like the amount of money and the amount of players and the amount of, money they're putting into specific rosters automatically buys them into the conversation of they're better than Boise state, right? It's not the performance on the field. It's not the performance of the season or whatever's happening. It's the, the amount of money and infrastructure that are at these programs are so high. We're better than these guys. Right. And so I just think that's going to be the impetus that pulls them away. Sure. I really believe that. And I just think I see all of this argument going back and forth on everybody. And I love being in the conversation with BSU. I think that's going to be a big, I don't know, driver to the separation. Yeah. I just, I'm in the opinion at the moment is like, we're in the moment we are right now. Enjoy it. And like invest, invest, invest so that we can just be at the highest level possible. But listen, us enjoy it. Yeah. Every SEC team hates it. Every SEC fan yeah, they think that they hate be... that Boise State's in the. Oh country. yeah, they do. Okay, and they're the ones with yeah. the power. I I agree. And so, so I just don't see it being a sustainable conversation and debate to happen. It's probably year. not. It's probably not. Yeah. But I I would just say you're probably right. Eventually, we'll see when that happens. But I think the goal, and I know we've said this, the goal has to be get to that level that whatever the Big Twelve type teams are in right now is where we want to be. Because there's no reason that we can't compete with that level of team like year in and year out. Um, so that's why I'm so happy we, we're winning, yeah. why we have Dickey, why we're investing, we're doing the North End Zone, we're, we've got the NIL stuff going, um, because it matters, because there will be another shift. We'll talk about this more on the offseason, I'm sure. <laughs> but winning right now is huge. You know what? I don't mind. I don't mind if we're playing Utah's. I don't know. Let's say let's say 34 teams go up. Yeah. Or 40 teams go up. Yeah. And then the next 40 – or where okay. we're at, yeah. I don't mind playing those teams. It, it, even a lot of them could be regional. Mm-hmm. You know, the Arizona States and the Utahs or the BYUs or the Cows or whoever, I don't know. Yes. Um, that would be meaningful to me, even if it's like, okay, we can't keep up year in and year out of the budgets that – did you see Did you see that budget, that listing of the teams that are in the playoffs? Yeah. Like o- Oregon's at 60 – and Ohio State's are like 80, and Michigan's are not Michigan, but Alabama, they're all like 70, 60, 50 yeah. million dollars, and then BSU's at 21 million. <laughs> our, <laughs> our entire football budget was the budget for the coaching, only coaching for like Ohio State or something yeah. like that. So, yeah, it, it, but that's how it always is. That's how it's yeah. always been and, and will be. I would, the only thing that would really piss me off, really, really piss me off, would be if there was a break and it was like, the power four as it is, and we're left with the group of five. Because I don't think we deserve that. As a program, as a school, we deserve to be with the BYUs and the Utahs and the Arizona States and the Houstons and whatever. Um, So that's, but that's what we're working towards right now. Yeah. Um, So we'll see. Well, you got to have more than just performance on the field. You have to have boosters and lobbyists. And And we're doing it, dude. Yeah. The 25 million, they announced that at the game. Uh, uh, we already knew Noble. about it, but yeah. the Alan Noble thing, they kind of made a big announcement. Um, what you got to do is have JD's somebody working. come out. Like, let's say the decision is going to be made next month. Have somebody come out and say, I'm committing a mil- hundred million to the program. Just say it. And then <laughs> renege on it in two months. Or <laughs> or tr- 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 and, oh, whoops. Sorry. <laughs> Not going to do that. You know what yeah. I mean? And just be like, uh, we're going to pay a hundred million over many life signs. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. So yeah. I don't know. Uh, it is good though to be in this situation and know that you've got guys like Dicky that are working so hard, mm-hmm. and, you know, where it's not like, hey, there's this momentum like we've had in years past and Nothing. kind of asleep at the wheel and not yeah. really doing what we should be doing. It's like I have full confidence in Dicky and his team. They're, you know, their whole "what's next" mantra that they're. It, I mean, I think that's true as well. You, they are continuously announcing things yeah. that, like, hey, these yep. this initiative, this money we just went and got. They're announcing it. They're doing it. They're making it happen. And, you know, they're putting their. Do we get a sellout this week? Yeah, uh, I, think I think we, we do. You think we we're do? We're like 5,000 yeah. right now still left. 
There were, I, it was so was hard. I, I saw Dickie's thing, and it was, you know, student sees, whatever. It There's still several thousand, but I think by Friday, you'd like to think, even if they got to get him out to, like, the Air Force Base or something. I saw Dron Johnson's coming. Yeah. Is he? A bunch yeah. of people are coming, dude. Seems like. Yeah. It's a big game. It's a big game. Yeah. No, I think we'll all I'll be there. We're all, <laughs> no all three what. of us are yeah. going to be there, no doubt about yeah. it. You can't. I'll say you cannot. If you're listening to this podcast and you've made it an hour and whatever this Basically, is, Basically, if you're a family member of us, yeah, you got to be at this game. I mean, what's the excuse other than like basketball tournament? No, that's not an excuse. My son's playing Friday night. Are I'm we, sorry, dude. I'm going to the game. My my, my wife. How, how do you him. feel about people giving other fans guilt trips to go? Is that, is that does it count as huh? a guilt trip or is oh, it just less like, like us telling other fans? Well, sure. Or there's other people just like. Saying similar things. Is that I, good? Is it? I feel, I don't, I, I mean, I don't like telling, telling people, people how to use their money and do it. I just feel like if you're a real Boise State fan, this is the Do you think the, the real biggest, fans know that though? Like, they, of yeah. course I know I should go to this game. Yeah. I, I just feel like if you're the fan that says, I'm a huge fan. I watch every game. I live in Boise, but I'd rather stay at home because it's more comfortable. I think that's the wrong attitude personally. And so, I get it. And it is, it's more comfortable. You can go to the battle. You get it. This is a game yeah. you got to be at, unless you have physical ailments or there's some, just my opinion, just because it's not about you. That's what I, it's not about you. It's about the team. And what can you do as a fan to help out the team is to sell out the game and be loud. Be loud. Cue and like, emotional music here for me. No, I'm serious though. That's <laughs> what <laughs> most people, most people aren't big donors. Most people can't do that. You can show up to this game. Yeah. And you can you can be cold for three hours and you can be there. Now, I think a lot of people are hoping they get sold out and then they can just be like, oh, it's so sold out. So I'll stay home, which is fine. Yeah. But it needs to be a sell. There, there's no excuse for this not to be a sell. It's the biggest game ever. We've yeah. sold out. I mean, if you look at the other games that we sold out here. It's a little late, but, you know. It's, <laughs> yeah. Is this the... <laughs> Sorry, I don't have Preach it. that motivation. <laughs> but, I mean, if you look, we sold out Oregon State, right? Yeah. We sold out... Who else came Freaking here? Freaking Utah State. We Utah sold State. everyone. Every game yeah, that happened six here. Games, six games, six This right? game is much bigger than any of them. Much bigger. The yeah. biggest. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Can you go back to the team? Do it for the team. about you. It was for the team, baby. It was a one-time thing, dude. It was a one-time thing. I wish I would have had this queued up. Could you imagine, dude? What are our predictions? We have predictions? Are we done? We're out, right? Predictions. What do we got? We got to do predictions. Yeah, we got to do predictions for sure. Let me guess. Mark's going to... I think we're going to win. Last no, time you... I did. I predicted a loss. I think it's super going to be tough. I think it's going to be low scoring. I'm going with like a 21-17. We win. 21-17. 21-17. So we cover the... Well, we don't cover no, the spread let's as see. it is. 20, 24-20. 24-20. We got a field goal in there. I'll go 27-17. We win. 27-17. Yeah. What was the score of the last game? 28-24 or something like that. Yeah. It was low scoring too. Is it a low scoring game? I mean, it's sometimes when you think it is early like December. Four. Dude, Syracuse, my that was game. not low scoring. Well, that's in a dome. <laughs> There's no defense. Anyway, <sighs> how many score? How many? Tw- I think we get a. T- uh, do we get a? T- twenty-eight points is what we score, and we win twenty-eight twenty. Okay. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. This music touches me <laughs> deep. Let's just keep it at the music. Okay, <laughs> just say. <laughs> How no sweet other, would it be? No other touching of Brandon. Yeah. How sweet would it be when this game we're talking Dude, playoffs? No. Playoffs? Dude, we're going to get some sweet guests in in that month oh, time yeah. frame. We're going to get some oh. sweet guests in. Otherwise, we're just going to have counselors come in as a guest. Dude, mm-hmm. yeah. Therapists. Therapists we're just talking. $200 through. an hour. I we'll think crowdsource, that's we'll now, crowdsource that whole thing. <laughs> oh. Pay for our mental health. Yeah. It's going to be... Yeah. Just be positive. Yeah. Are we going to go well, out? This is our some... outro music, baby. Uh, this is it? Yeah. All right. Let's All right. That's going to do it for us today. Thanks for listening to the Shirt Skins podcast. Um, we got the game Friday. We'll probably record on Saturday, uh, Sunday, mm-hmm. what I'm guessing. Probably, yeah. So join us for all the highlights, all of the... Or counseling sessions. All the motivational... <laughs> we'll be here either quotes. way. We'll be here. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>